Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I feel I owe the public this video today going through Bitcoin in which I feel we are on the tipping edge for the move to the downside. And the reason I feel so compelled to bring you this video is because of the dangerous talk that is going around on or from the larger cryptocurrency accounts. And I acknowledge that they have a large pull, so to speak, in this market. And people talking in certainties or absolutes right now of Bitcoin is going up this week is a dangerous way to think that almost certainly <laughs> that almost certainly will get you wrecked. Okay, it will get you wrecked and you most certainly will lose money. So what I'm going to do is bring you an analysis, a technical viewpoint of this chart, which will hopefully stop you getting wrecked. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go into the video today. Let's go into the analysis. Let's go into the charts. So on the four hour here, uh, as you all may or may not know, I suppose, we are very much within a range. And I know the saying is trade the range until it breaks. What... You, you have to remember with that context, though, is we can always kind of get a heads up of, is this still a good long? I want you to just look at the facts here. So what are a few facts that we can talk about? OK, so no opinions here, just hard, cold facts. We have touched the low of the range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven ish, six, seven times we've touched the low of this range. What, have, what has happened, if we just say six times, what has happened on the last five touches? Wick on, quick recovery. Wick, quick recovery. Rel relatively speaking, V-shaped recovery. Now, again, swing failure pattern of the lows with a quick recovery. The retest, quick recovery. So the last five touches of this range, low, have been on very swift, quick recoveries. If we look at the sixth time here, can you see the difference already? I hope you can. We are now consolidating above support. This is the first major difference of why this time we might want to take a little bit of care before just blindly longing down here. Hey, that could be considered low probability long right now. What is the next factor that we can look at? Obviously, I went into a lot more detail on this in my members live streams, but here for the public, just really simply put, we obviously had our range and we had our range levels and they have been respected pretty Perfectly, as we all know, off of the value area high to the value area low, that point of control flipped into resistance. We obviously had the daily resistance here with, as confluence, and we have now seen the decline in price. So in the next fact, OK, this is not my opinion. This is not me trying to shield. This is just doing hard, cold facts. The next fact is we are obviously consolidating above support. And the second fact is we have lost the value area low and not only lost it but also back tested it which really gives us that next step of confirmation that the value area low is currently as we're speaking an undeniable fact is resistance okay so how could we approach this then in a sensible fashion well i've already i've already kind of been thinking to myself we all know if we just hide this a second, if we just hide this and we'll hide this, we all know what retail are talking about right now. And obviously, we, when I refer to retail, we just mean the general public. 95% um, of traders lose money. And this is what 95% of traders are looking at right now. That, that statistic stay with you. So if 95% of people are looking at this falling wedge, who here thinks it's going to trade well? Rhetorical question, and I hope that you know my answer. 95% of people looking at this falling wedge, 95% of people lose money. Do you think this falling wedge is going to trade well? Well, that's for you to decide, I suppose. What can we what can we imagine here? If people are longing this falling wedge, where do we think their stop losses are likely? Well, I think we, we can agree people might be going for here. People might be going for the 30k lows or people obviously might be going for the overall low, which is obviously about coming in at about 28,000. So we can just say stop losses are likely going to be down there around 28,800 ish, 28,900, 28, this low exactly. Let's just be precise. 
you can imagine stop losses are probably about 28 700 28 600 so you have three potential places where people might have their stops here to protect themselves from the range low eg what we imagine is people are going for this no up to the range high maybe we've got their stop loss below the overall low of the range thinking it's safe below the 30k or very tight invalidation people might be having it simply below the last low that's made thinking to themselves hey if it loses this low we have broken down from the falling wedge and isn't that extremely um unexpected <laughs> what a surprise that would be for many i suppose if they're expecting upwards and they're confident on upwards well it's a surprise to them if it goes down first what you have to remember is many people might celebrate if it does this saying hey i told you so it was a falling wedge it was bullish but what they would not tell you is that they had got stopped out prior to the rise to the upside of course that's a very important bit of information that many people will forget to tell you so what you have to remember here is okay we're consolidating above support we have lost our major support and it's currently resistance and we are in a pattern that many people might consider bullish. So what do we have to bear in mind then here? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. If we look at this in a sensible fashion. Okay. I question I well, I question you indirectly, I suppose. What would you what would be your trade setup here? Yeah, you know, what would be your trade setup? Not what, what not what my trade setup is, not what the guy next to you trade setup is not for the for the woman down the road what her trade setup is no but what is your trade setup yeah hopefully you've done your technical analysis hopefully you have your ideas hopefully you know where you want to enter longs you know where you want to enter shorts so right now what is your trade setup is it a long is it a short or is it no trade and that's what you've got to know for certain what you're aiming for here because if you are approaching today with not the slightest clue in the world what you're game aiming for and you're waiting for somebody to tweet you're waiting for somebody to release a youtube video i can tell you one thing there's a high probability you've already lost the trade yeah if you're waiting for somebody else's analysis you have very much likely lost you do not know why they're entering you do not know where their take profits are you do not know the way that they're managing their trade so truly the only way that you can expect to win is if you've already got your plan yeah, so it's, it's irrelevant to you. It should be fairly irrelevant what my plan is. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I've done a Champions live stream last night explaining exactly what I'm going to be doing if you want assistance with that. But I think the majority of people obviously need to use this knowledge and use this insights to still formulate their own plans at the end of the day. So I think you obviously have a long, short or no trade at all, as you always, or as you always do. So, so do you think it's a good idea to long when we are grinding at support and we have no real major factor to tell us to long. What you have to remember is we have major bearish divergences that are forming. One would say it's likely that we will take out this low at the very least. Obviously some sort of swing failure pattern type move. And we're obviously very much down towards the low of the range. I acknowledge that. This is obviously a mini range within itself. If you look on the 30 minute chart. Okay, since we put in the first low, we have really simply been going... Oops, let me just highlight this to you very clearly. We clearly have about the low of our range and we have around the high of our range. Obviously, that value area low was the retest before coming down to the lows. So we have a we do have a mini range on a lower term time frame, and I totally understand that. But on the on the higher term time frames, do you think this is a good long? Well, in my perspective, not at the moment. <laughs> not at the moment. I would like to see a little bit more further downside. Obviously, as always. And this is the one thing that you have to, I think this comes with time and experience and, you know, recognizing the market. You will hear me say things like this. I personally wouldn't long here. I would prefer to wait for lower, wait for a swing for your pound, for example, or just naturally wait for lower prices or C, resistance reclaimed as, as support. What does that show me? Well, if resistance is reclaimed as support, that weakness that we have right now is negated as well as a sign of strength comes into the market. Right now we have weakness and we have no sign of strength. E.g. this is not, for me, personally a good time to long. I would prefer to wait for lower. Okay, Or I would prefer to see that sign of strength, which is simultaneously negating the weakness that we currently have in the chart. So one of those two factors for me is a long trigger. But as it stands, I have no long trigger. Thus, I will not take a long. And because I'm trading in probabilities, I acknowledge, I will always acknowledge this. My analysis 
My analysis can be right or my analysis can be wrong, but there's one thing that you will never see me do, and that is get wrecked. Because a lot of people will always say, you know, if I pr proclaim here, hey, you know, I'm in a short position, I'm expecting lower. You know, you all know the comments, uh, if, if it pumps up like this, that the first comments that you get are, hey, you got wrecked. Hey, how does it feel to get wrecked? You already know that the, the comments are coming if it pumps. I already know. But the thing is, as a professional trader, you do not get wrecked off of this type of move. Just because I am not willing to long here, well, it doesn't mean I'm shorting, and, and I would not short here personally. You know, this is not for me a short, even though I'm looking for lower, would not short here. Yeah. So how would it equal getting wrecked if there's a rise in price? No. It would to uh, for, for a noob trader that has no idea what they're all about. Maybe they might like to think, hey, you got wrecked. But as a professional trader, you should never be in the position of getting wrecked. Why? Because we're adapting to the market. We're willing to change our biases. And we also use own risk management. So th th there should be no scenario ever. And I mean ever where you get wrecked. Period. We should never, ever be getting wrecked. Okay, especially if you're in the group, I really hope you've at least learned this by now. We should never be in a position of getting wrecked. Okay, so I, I, I approached this today on a day where, yes, I obviously I'm referring to some people with large voices within the space that are speaking in absolutes that, um, you know, for instance, never think things can happen. This is a word we should never see is never. Never say never in crypto because it really does, it really can make you look a bit silly. This is the week where we literally will do as we do every other week, and that's trade the charts. We are not starting the week expecting moon. We're not starting the week expecting inversely. We're starting the week as we will start every single week without fail, doing our technical analysis, making our plans, marking out our levels, knowing where we want to trade. Period. Yeah, period. That's all we need. As I've said before, it does not matter to us whether price goes up down or sideways. The only thing that matters to us is having our technical analysis done, ready, prepared, and waiting then for that trade to come to us. Yeah. So EG, we play, we play from a position of strength. We play with the cards. We are the casino. Now we're not the guy coming in gambling on the slot machines. We're the guy owning the slot machines, ready and waiting to take other people's cash. Yeah? We are approaching this in a statistical manner well, we acknowledge not every single trade is going to win. But if we're walking away as the casino winning 80%, we're paying out a little bit. But in comparison to what we're bringing in, it's, you know, the, the losses are, are are small. You know, this is where it comes down to. You know, you have your Elliott Wave counts, you have your levels marked out, we have our analysis done. And then it literally comes down to a waiting game. It comes down to remaining patient, not trading when you shouldn't trade, ready and waiting for your analysis. And I feel truly feel that's what you need to be doing today. Do not start off the week in hopium, you know, injecting the hopium into your veins that, oh, yes, we're going higher. Of course we are. Or, oh, yes, we're definitely going lower. At the end of the day, nobody knows if we're definitely going lower or we're definitely going higher. And anybody that tries to sell you the dream that they know what's happening is a fraud and is a scammer. I will openly say nobody will know exactly what's going to happen. And the only way that we can consistently, and I repeat this, consistently make money from this market Week on week is by having the levels to trade and knowing when not to trade. And I will say this week on week on week. How do you see me winning consistently? How do you see not only me, but obviously other people in the group winning consistently? Well, it's because we actually know what we're doing when it comes to technical analysis. And that does not mean we, we do not need to know where price is going to make money because it doesn't make any difference to us where price goes. Up, down or sideways. We know the levels to trade. And we will trade them. I will tell you that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to see more in-depth analysis, last night I obviously done the Champions live stream where I'd done all my analysis. So if you want to see my more in-depth plan, obviously where I've gone through what exactly what I'm looking for in terms of my long um, positions, I done my trade of the week last night. If you're interested in that, I done that in last night's Champions live stream. If you want to learn all of the details behind this, you know, no hype, no clueless pattern tradings, no pointless indicators, just the charts. If you want to learn, hey, we got chart champions, contenders and champions group for you. Um, you know, people love what we're doing and, uh, you know, I love to see people doing well. So it's 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 a nice space at the moment. There's trades to be had. Ladies and gentlemen, final words. Don't get carried away. 
don't, don't fall into the snake salesman's hands. You know, you got to be prepared, ready, and just be, I suppose, my final words, sorry, I always say final words before I end, just be prepared to trade any direction. And when you lose the wants of the market, because it doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't matter if you want to see price rise. It doesn't matter if you want to see price go down. Your wants are irrelevant and nobody cares about what you want. The only thing that you care about is what the market is telling you. Yeah. And what the market is actually doing. So I will end very briefly with this final picture. This is a massive bearish divergence, isn't it? See this? Your lower, continuous lower highs and continuous higher highs, mate. So obviously, massive bearish divergence is you had it play out here, bam, here, bam. When you're trading the charts, when you're trading the technicals, you truly are not surprised. Yeah, You are not surprised when you see these reactions because it is all in the charts. It is all in the technicals. And what can I say? There are many trades to be had. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. And uh, yeah, do not be surprised. <laughs> Have your analysis marked out and get ready for the next trade. It's as simple as that. Thank you ever so much. No financial advice, obviously, in this video. If you have enjoyed, smash the likes. Please smash the likes as hard as you can right now. Smash them to a new all-time high. If you want more content like this, if you like me keeping it real, show your appreciation down below. Leave me a comment. Leave me a like. And, you know, I will just say thank you ever so much. I really hope I have helped somebody in this video. If I have, mission complete. Thank you ever so much. And that's me saying goodbye. Cheers, everybody. And thank you.